Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. Deborah Murray. Today we're going to talk about treatment of hip and knee replacement infections. You can have a superficial or a deep prosthetic joint infection. A superficial infection is usually minor and most occur just after surgery. It's a wound infection involving the tissues and around the wound and the skin. A deep infection is more severe. It occurs around your replacement hardware or prosthesis. And an incision that initially heals well and then weeks later opens and drains, we call this a sinus tract, is more suspicious of a deep hardware infection. Hardware infections are severe and very difficult to treat. Up to about one to 2% of cases will end up with a hardware infection. Well, that might seem like a small amount, but it is rare unless you're that one case because these infections are a serious complication requiring additional surgeries, long courses of antibiotics, debilitation with mobility problems, potential for nursing home care, and can rarely end up in amputation. We categorize the infections as an early prosthetic joint infection that occurs within 30 days of your hardware placement and a later infection is more than 30 days after your hardware is placed. Well, how does this happen? Well, infection can occur at the time of surgery. We talked about this before. We can't sterilize your skin or bacteria can get into your bloodstream transiently even from some mild infection, a urinary tract infection or pneumonia, or possibly bacteria could get deeper into the implant from a poorly healed wound. So why are prosthetic hardware infections so difficult to treat? Most of us believe it's because of biofilms. Biofilms are groups of bacteria that surround themselves with protective material this biofilm makes it difficult for your immune system or your infection fighting cells to remove the bacteria and for antibiotics to kill the bacteria. Moreover, there's a problem of poor or no blood supply to the implant itself. And then if the surrounding bone gets infected, that adds another complication. This diagram shows colonies of Staph aureus, and you can see the gooey material between the clumps. This is that material that the bacteria produce to form that protective layer. And this is an interesting experiment. They took a piece of hardware, and the upper right corner shows Staph aureus in blue in biofilm formation and it's more common on the rugged piece of hardware compared to the smooth hardware. You can see the blue colonies of staph on the smooth hardware below. So the diagnosis is supported by culture uh, and isolation of a microorganism, usually bacteria, most often staph aureus. But hardware can be infected even if you have negative cultures. There's a variety of things that can contribute to having negative cultures. But if all the cultures are negative, but the clinical suspicion is present, treatment is recommended. It's a risk benefit type of scenario. So how do you treat it? Well, it's treated with surgery and antibiotics. The debridement antibiotic implant retention, we'll call this polyethylene exchange procedure, its success rate is higher for early prosthetic joint infections. Sometimes it's done for later infections, depending upon the surgery and the, and the surgeon and the particular case. And an open pr procedure is preferred, not the arthroscopic debridement. And it should include removal of the polyethylene or the plastic portion then aggressive washout followed by placement of a new sterile polyethylene portion. Typically a minimum of six to eight weeks of IV antibiotics, then a minimum of three to six months of oral antibiotics. This can vary depending upon the situation. For a two-stage procedure, we 
encounter this more common, and this is performed with late onset prosthetic joint infections more than 30 days after your implantation. You remove all of the old hardware, aggressive washing out of the whole area, then the surgeon places a temporary spacer, often an antibiotic loaded spacer. Typically IV antibiotics for a minimum of six to eight weeks, then off of antibiotics for a minimum of two to three weeks. You reevaluate a minimum of two to three weeks after antibiotics are stopped for signs and symptoms of infection. Why do we want you to wait and be off of antibiotics? Well, it can appear as though your infection is cured, but if you have just a few bacteria left in that area, they'll start to multiply off of the antibiotics and our hope is that inf infection would be declared before you go to surgery. After you wait that two to three week period, you're re-evaluated in the operating room for any signs of infection before proceeding to the second stage. And the second stage is removal of that temporary spacer and placement of new hardware. We rarely see the single stage procedure in the US. It's not that common. Basically, people go, Patients would go to the operating room, you have all the implant removed, aggressively washed, and place a new implant at the very same time with antibiotics thereafter. The treatment success rates are variable. I have a hard time even giving a patient their percent of cure. Studies are so variable and often with small studies, not controlling for multiple different factors, but overall, the success rate in the literature ranges anywhere from 40% to more than 90%. With the two-stage procedure, in general, there's a higher success rate because you're removing all that hardware. And this is especially done, as we talked about, with late prosthetic joint infections. Reports of success rates around 80 to 90%. With the washout and exchange of the polyethylene piece only, some reports of success rate around 70%. Sometimes that can be lower and sometimes it can be higher. Other treatment possibilities, I'm not gonna go into depth on this, but sometimes the implant has to be totally removed and the bones have to be fused together. These, these treatments are not as common and that could be for multiple reasons, oftentimes debilitation and uh, not enough bone to have another surgery and multiple surgeries. Or you could be put on chronic suppressive lifelong antibiotic therapy. We've talked about issues with antibiotics. Everything has to be weighed. What's the risk? What's the benefit of that? That's typically used in patients that can't tolerate additional surgeries. A last resort would be above the knee amputation when it comes to a prosthetic knee joint infection. And this can happen when the infection continues despite all treatments or there's not enough bone or uh, to form any form of an artificial joint there, or you have severe persistent pain. So treatment success depends on multiple factors. Let's start at 12 o'clock, the duration of the infection, longer duration, more difficult to treat. The type of bacteria, resistant bacteria like MRSA, more difficult to treat. Adequate type and duration of antibiotic. I recommend you have an infectious disease physician on your case. You need antibiotics with good bone penetration. Adequate and type of surgical debridement. This may require multiple surgical debridements and the overall health of the patient. What is your health? You have increased risk if you have poorly controlled diabetes, you're on immunosuppressive medications, or if you have morbid obesity. So in summary, prosthetic joint infections are rare, up to one to 2%. That is with total hip and knee. Severe infection that can be devastating, it can be cured too. Cultures may be negative, requires additional surgeries, long courses of antibiotics. The surgeon will decide if you have a polyethylene exchange or a two-stage 
Infectious disease physician should assist with your management and the type of surgery and antibiotics depends on the individual case. Variable success rates, anywhere from 40 to greater than 90%. The polyethylene exchange, about 70%, some lower, some higher. The two-stage procedure, about 80 to 90% success rate. Given, thus, given the overall severity of infection, it's critically important that you understand the risk of hip and knee replacement and the infection prevention tips are followed. See my prior video on 10 tips to prevent prosthetic joint infection. As always, this is educational purposes. Consult your healthcare provider for guidance specific to your case. Stay informed, watch more videos about infections on this channel and make sure you ask questions. What is the risk? What is the benefit? Thank you so much. Have a great day.